What's going on, Don't Unfriend Me Nation? I promised myself that when I ran across other social media influencers and started this game, that I would be kind, and I'm going to try to be today. I ran across somebody you may have heard. I don't know if you've heard of her. Let me know. Leah McGowan. She is politics girl on social media. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of pick apart one of her videos because although the production value is fantastic and that earns my respect, the content itself, I have some questions. I'll be right back and I'll explain. Do you want the truth? Are you tired of being so confused? You feel like you're more f***ed up than the lies on the evening news. We'll just step right in. We can talk about it all as friends. The Don't Unfriend Me Show brought to you by Spreely TV. It's going to be available on the iPhone app, Android Fire Stick, Roku, all of that coming soon. Really excited to be a part of the Spreely TV family politics girl podcast. Now, the first picture I found of her wasn't the 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 most, I don't know, flattering. So I was like, I'm going to put that on. And if it was AOC or someone else, I'm going to. But you know what? This lady's very successful. She's put herself out there. She does very well. And you know, here's the cool thing I will say about her. She brings a positive spin to the BS that she spews. And that's important, right? I mean, because I can be negative. I think everyone can be negative. And she seems fairly positive. Uh, She doesn't just trounce on Trump. She touts that Joe Biden is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So is it true? Bear with me because we've got a ton to cover. She goes at a thousand miles an hour. I thought I was fast, but my gosh, she starts right away. Here it is. Talking about Biden's age isn't irrelevant. It's just pointless. He's the candidate. Well, we're going to start off right away. Uh, (laughs) Irrelevant and pointless are the same thing. I mean, I I don't mean to like nitpick, but if you're going to say that it's irrelevant, but then it's pointless, it's the same thing. So it's not irrelevant. It's important. In fact, her entire video is to dignify and qualify why Joe Biden's age isn't important. And it is, folks, but we'll get into that uh, in a second. And sure, as far as marketability, it might have been better if the Democrats were running a 60-year-old Joe Biden and not the 80-year-old Joe Biden. But as far Well, it's interesting. People aren't really worried about 2024. They're worried about the average life expectancy. And Biden is 80 years old. He will turn 82 just a few weeks after the 2024 election, and he would be 86 were he to finish his second term. According to the Social Security Administration, the cohort life expectancy table, a male born in 1942, that's Biden's birth year, had a life expectancy at birth of 71.1 years. Leaves a little bit left to be desired. Not much time left according to the cohort's table. And I think America understands that and they're a little worried about it. Qualifications and capability? I'm not sure there's anyone better than 80-year-old Joe Biden in 2024. Joe Biden has... See how she said 2024, but not 2028. There's people who are better than Joe Biden now. I mean, that's not the hardest thing to go ahead and do. There's just nobody available to actually run who has a chance. Plus, he's an incumbent, which he's going to be the DNC push forward. Obviously, I mean, you just don't do that. It's the biggest home court advantage in politics is being an incumbent. Presided over the strongest post-pandemic recovery in the G7. He's added over 13 million jobs to our economy. He passed the Infrastructure and Jobs Act. Okay, let's let's slow down. First of all, the only thing that the United States did is get back to their place at number one, the biggest economy in the world. And we were trending that way in 2019, a far cry from where Obama and Vice President Joe Biden were. So to simply say we had the fastest recovery, yeah, it's because we got the biggest economy. But altogether, talking about the jobs, around 13.5 million in total have been added since January 2021. However, Most of these were recovered jobs and that they returned after the pandemic closures and restrictions came to an end. Across industries, people were rehired when shuttered workplaces were reopened or after remote workers began to return to their offices. And according to congressional analysis, that amounted to a whopping 70% of the jobs in 2021. So it's a little disingenuous to say 13 million jobs, but that will go on throughout the video. To finally fix our crumbling roads and bridges, rid 
All right, crumbling roads and bridges. I mean, these these talking points are all from the DNC webpage. It, it didn't take long. All I had to do was print out what she said and copy and paste and throw it on the internet and then find out that these are all the DNC talking points. And that's unfortunate because she's got a great show. She's got a great attitude, a great you know disposition, but surface level for sure. The roadways, 45,000 bridges and roadways were identified as in poor condition. Biden released only $5 billion of the $1 trillion infrastructure bill. In January of 2022, that is when it happened. No other money has been released until this week, as the Biden administration is claiming $61 billion is released. But only $28 billion of that is for roadways and bridges. And only 15,000 of those bridges will be repaired over the next five years, leaving 30,000 bridges and roadways in poor condition. The rest is allocated for other spending, mostly climate change and CO2 reductions, wildlife crossing programs, vehicle per mile use fee, also known as use your vehicle and get taxed for it, at-risk coastal grants, and wireless recharging EV vehicle grants. Interesting. I thought it was for Build Back Better? Oh, no, no, no. Inflation Reduction Act. That's what it was, but it has nothing to do with that. Country of lead pipes and bring even the most rural locations in America high-speed broadband. All right. So lead pipes. (laughs) Lead pipes. It's a back of an envelope calculation, and it's based on the EPA's estimate of average replacement cost per line. This just recently came out in 2022. $4,700 an assumption of 6 to 10 million lead service lines across the country suggests that the cost could range from 28 billion to 47 billion putting Biden's originally proposed 45 billion near the top of that range but the 15 billion legislated is well below it so asking for 15 but truly needing anywhere from that 30 to 45 billion dollar mark internet There's a reason rural and small town dwellers have less access to the sort of fast internet connections that urban dwellers enjoy. It costs a lot of money to lay fiber optic cable. It's an average cost of $1,000 to $1,250 per resident's household passed or $60 to $80,000 per mile. In fact, wireless internet offerings 10 to 50 megabytes per second, and it is increasing. These connections such as HughesNet, Viasat, and Starlink All are options. And although Biden claims by 2030 all will have high-speed internet, with growing bandwidth limitations and increased internet traffic, the speeds of 100 Mbps up and 20 Mbps down are unfortunately not realistic or future-proof. He's strengthened U.S. alliances and partnerships all around the world, stood up for democracy as an autocratic rival nation, attempted to take over a democratic one. Stood up for democracy democracy is on the ballot in 2024 people geopolitics iran testing missiles come on launching geosynchronous rockets last week into space which means they have the capability for icbm launch they're just waiting for the nuclear fission material to make a nuke How about north korea they're ramping up their rocket programs the middle east is on the brink of regional conflict between seven different countries even though we had the accords from the abraham accords and peace treaties with four different countries with israel welcome to donald trump who didn't get the nobel peace prize should have had four of them But Barack Obama did for striking 400 and some odd Americans with drone strikes during his tenure. But who cares? How about Russia and Ukraine? You mentioned it. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Houthis, are all up in arms and looking to unify against the state of Israel. How about China and Taiwan? How about the growing effort, number of countries, to reduce the role of the U.S. dollar in international trade? Countries like India, China, Brazil, and Malaysia, among others, are seeking to set up trade channels using currencies other than the almighty dollar. Poverty and famine around the globe due to conflicts, Chinese balloons, and terrorist crossings of our border. In the end... Perhaps the very worst U.S. foreign policy idea of the past 50 years has been the abandonment of myriad good ideas Americans once fought for and the institutions that promote them. It's interesting that she says geopolitics are really kind of the mark on the board. Unfortunately, it is a tarnished mark on Joe Biden's presidency thus far. 
He found an alternative to our dependence on China by signing a comprehensive strategic partnership with Vietnam. He brought Ooh, Vietnam. <laughs> They're like 12th in the race. That's the CHIPS program. In the U.S., where semiconductors were invented, produced 37% of the world's supply of chips as recently as the 1990s. But only 12% of all computer chips are produced domestically now. These facilities cost $20 billion to create, and the CHIPS Act doesn't address the increasingly skilled labor gap and qualified people to work there. A meager $59.6 billion is the number in an effort to grow the market share. The most challenging factor is the need to move the entire supply chain, not just the final manufacturing stages, but also sources of raw material, expert suppliers, and leading equipment makers, etc. The manufacturing of any product at scale and at competitive quality and prices requires entire ecosystems or clusters of multiple companies, and it is a long-term Herculean effort to move everything. You need to incentivize the companies to come back is the goal. And it starts with lowering tax penalties and creating incentives for companies to leave their tax havens and cheap labor overseas. $60 billion will not get that done. Semiconductor manufacturing back to the U.S. Passed the PACT Act to support our veterans and their survivors. Passed a bill to... Oh, okay. PACT Act. PACT Act. Notes. Um... Oh, yeah, that was the good thing Joe did. I uh, did a show on it. Congratulations. It's awesome. Anything for our veterans is good. I got to give you that one, sister. You definitely rock and rolled. Not a postmodernistic feminista on that point. Congratulations. The fundamental right to marriage. Signed executive orders to help. Wait, 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 wait. The Marriage Act. Okay. The, the government shouldn't be involved in the bedroom and certainly shouldn't dictate a religious ceremony for anyone. Common law marriage is perfectly acceptable for tax implications and other filings, which people tend to have the biggest bones of contention with those. However, if you're asking religious people to go against their core beliefs, that is another unconstitutional provision that was upheld by the Supreme Court. You can't force religious institutions to act against their beliefs. And let's not pretend the Democrats and Joe Biden are the bastions for LGBTQ rights. They did this simply when it became politically advantageous to do so in the last 10 years. I'm sure Roe v. Wade is up Back next. Reproductive rights as the Republicans strip them away from us every day. He passed the... Roe v. Wade was never a right. It simply sent the 14th Amendment overreach back to where it belonged. To the states. Thank God for the 10th Amendment. It is up to the states to codify the law in the House, and nobody wants to do the work because it, because it is political suicide, just like unconstitutional gun legislation. Hard work is often overlooked versus easy talking points. Democrats don't care about pro-choice, and if they did, they would have passed legislation when they owned the House and Senate. Surely, a few moderate Republicans would have given them the nine or so votes they needed for the Senate, and more than plenty in the House. America is divided on the terms, not the act itself. The Right to Life Act has been proposed many times. You have the votes, and Democrats want unfettered access instead. It's not acceptable. The big three. Mother in danger, rape, incest, 15 weeks, it's on the table, it's sound, it makes sense, America agrees with it, Democrats do not. Most historic climate action in our nation's history through the Inflation Reduction Act, an act with... Inflation Reduction Act, but more, I don't know, overreach? Did the Inflation Reduction Act even focus on anything pertaining to, I don't know, inflation? No, but alas... We care about CO2 emissions and all of those things, but not necessarily our roadways, our bridges, and the way of life of Americans. Oh, and world peace, and well, I could go on. Here she is. Also reduced the cost of pharmaceutical drugs and capped insulin for seniors at $35. Yeah, you did that, but drugs and pharmacy, that kind of was uh, something else entirely. Biden simply let Trump's legislation expire and then reapplied the same legal ease in place and extended the timeline. And of course... Joe Biden took credit. Canceled more than $127 billion in student loan debt for 3.6 million citizens. Yeah, canceled really isn't the word. Canceled. He made you pay for something you didn't do. I thought it was supposed to be for 45 million plus citizens. Oh, wait. 
the SCOTUS struck it down yet again as unconstitutional. So Biden used an obscure debt forgiveness program that he didn't create and took credit for it yet again. And I'm pretty sure he took credit for Social Security as well with the increase that was established during LBJ and had nothing to do with Joe Biden. Well, at least he's consistent. And passed the most significant gun safety law in decades. Gun legislation. You knew I had to do this one. Congratulations. You passed anti-gun legislation that has zero chance of stopping actual crime. The portions of the bill he didn't get done, he has once again overreached and used unconstitutional executive orders to limit the Second Amendment from law-abiding citizens. Joe Biden wants all semi-automatics, including handguns. Why? Well, because they make up 59% of the gun deaths. And remember this, 32% in addition of these gun deaths, the weapon isn't even identified. And that is for the numbers game. Every crime can identify caliber and velocity with forensics, but some are just lazy or in bed with a Democrat DA so the numbers don't inflate. The truth is, with the amount of deaths totaling 13,000 in 2022, only 541 were with rifles. That's less than 2%. Don't believe the narrative. To lead in a way no one else could have during the crisis that's happening in the Middle East. Standing strong with our ally Israel. Crisis, you mean terrorist attacks. Send hundreds of millions of dollars in humanitarian aid to the innocent Palestinians caught in the crossfire. There is innocent? no simple solution to that terrible crisis. But I am relieved. Well, maybe Biden is being pressured to refreeze the $6 billion hostage ransom payment made to Iran last month. That would be a good start, perhaps, but it doesn't address Biden's month-long Iran sanctions relief campaign, totally more than $50 billion. That only emboldened Tehran's commitment to sponsor terrorism. The sanctions left the expansion of their oil program looking the other way during regional atrocities, even against the U.S., for the hopes of installing the Iran nuclear deal for Barack Obama. Should we even mention the pallets full of cash in the middle of the night while Biden was VP? I didn't think so. What about the humanitarian aid? It's reportedly going to get through to Palestinians. Why? Well, because the Biden State Department said Hamas promised to let them through. Nice. How did that work for Afghanistan and the Taliban? Iran? Did we just deal with all the terrorists now, is that what we are? We're a nation that cooperates and negotiates with terrorists. How wonderful. Let's listen to the final. That it's Joe Biden and the competent Democrats he's placed in charge that are at the wheel right now. Joe Biden may be chronologically old, but he's extraordinarily competent. Chronologically old? So he identifies as young? Wait, and we also go ahead and embrace gender now? I guess that's something. I don't know new. about you, but I don't vote for leaders based on their looks or their age or their gender. I vote for leaders who share my values and have the ability to accomplish what they say they're going to accomplish. Everything else is just window dressing. And honestly, if you truly feel hung up on age, please remember that Biden has surrounded himself with the youngest, most diverse group of staffers in modern history. And his vice president, if you can look past the racism and misogyny, is a wildly competent lady. You sold me up until now, even though I disagree with most of what you said, but racism has nothing to do with Kamala. She is a dipshit of royal proportions. 39% of registered voters had a favorable opinion of Harris and 55% had an unfavorable opinion, a net rating of negative 16 percentage points. Even Democrats don't like her. Give me a break. Brilliant woman in her 50s. Biden's... Wait a second, she's in her 50s. I thought age doesn't matter. Oh, whatever. Emphasis on empathy and inclusivity had him hosting White House meetings with young social media influencers because he knows that's where the youth of America are getting their news and he wanted to meet them where they were. So let's... Young social media influencers like the Krasistein brothers who stole $500,000 from old people in a Ponzi scheme, Harry Sasan, which I'll show you a video right after this, and Jojo from Jers, who was a bot and a fake profile, probably Russian. Yeah, uh, we are aware. Here's Harry Sasan. So the sale of AR-15 style rifles has now been banned. So the style ban, yeah, ban, FDA, or smash, weather, 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 days, days, days. The fact has been, the fact has been, but I could. Yeah, I know. It gives me a headache, too. Just stop it with the age thing. It is what it is. The question is, which boomer on the ticket is going to steer the country in the direction you want to go? Because the captain sets the course. And I care where he's headed, not how many candles are on his cake. 
Don't they just light the damn thing on fire? She finished up her statement and said boomer, which is a derogatory term for the baby boomer generation. And of course, all the Gen Z and millennials go ahead and insult the baby boomers as we insulted our generation. So I'm not going to clutch my pearls. But what I'm going to say is the beginning of your argument, you undercut everything you said by making it all about age. And we happen to agree with you, minus all the other things that I said that make Joe Biden a bad president. I will give you credit, ma'am. You did a great job on your video. You can follow her, political girl, over on Twitter. Uh, she's on Instagram and everything else. Give her a follow. Listen to what she has to say. Some of her stuff isn't bad, unlike that video. Folks, thanks for watching the Don't Unfriend Me show. God bless. Thank you for being here tonight. Monday, Olivia, myself, and Mike will be on. I think even Leroy and Amy will be here too. Stop on by, come say hello to us. And last but not least, stop over by thedumbshow.com, pick yourself up a cool shirt, hat, some coffee, and also get with us on Spreely TV. Thanks for watching the Donut and Friendly Show. We will see you next time.